One of the first board games that I ever really got invested in was Cosmic Encounter. I played it in the early 2000s, and I've picked up Fantasy Flight's edition since then with all the expansions, and still have a great time busting it out and having a real good time with a bunch of buddies. Years later, I had read Dune for the first time as well. I, now, I know Dune is a seminal sci-fi novel, kind of a backbone of that genre, but I have an issue where I tend to feel uh, like by proximity, I've experienced some of uh, the classic pieces of literature or film without ever actually having done so. I didn't see Casablanca for, until a couple of years ago, even though I love movies and watch tons of them. Same thing with Dune. Uh, I'm a big sci-fi fan, but I feel like uh, I have a tendency to skip classics. So I decided to read Dune and I loved it. I feel like an idiot for ever skipping it because it's great, Dune is fantastic, and I recommend it if you haven't read it. Imagine now my delight when I realized that the creators of the Cosmic Encounter board game also have made a Dune board game, and people seem to love it. I immediately went online and looked for a copy, only to find it's out of print and it's expensive. Big bummer, right? Well, there are a lot of people in the Dune game community that are wonderful artists that have put together gorgeous print-and-play copies of the original game. Some use the original assets, many don't. Many use new assets that look even better than the originals. So I decided years ago to try to put together one of those copies of the game. Now, I was not a very crafty person at that time, and so it was a bit of an undertaking. And uh, what I ended up putting together was a very functional, but not really aesthetically pleasing version of Dune. But it was functional. Again, it was functional, and that was my goal. I put it together, my buddies and I played it a few times, and I thought it was real cool. It's a game that I, I like a whole lot. In the years since, I have become more crafty and more uh, kind of well-learned on how to put together board games. I've done print and plays of 1889, and infamous traffic, as well as a handful of others. And so I decided, with Dune sort of back in the zeitgeist of popular science fiction because of the, the two new movies coming out soon, I would put together a new copy of uh, the board game for myself and my buddies to play. I really want a nice looking copy of this game. I want something that is not just functional but aesthetically pleasing as well. And so I decided to use, there are many good, beautiful uh, renditions of this game, but I've decided to use Ilya's artwork uh, redesign, because that seems to be the most popular, and so there's the most kind of um, uh, secondary and tertiary support for it. Uh, by which I mean there are a lot of the optional rules, optional factions, uh, optional expansions that have been made in that art style, if I so choose. What I learned is that it, this was actually a reasonably easy thing to put together. And I decided to uh, shoot everything that I've done, film everything that I did, so that I could hopefully help other people put together their copies of this game and realize it isn't all that difficult. I think a lot of people could do it uh, without having to invest too much money into it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the work that I did and hopefully it'll inspire you to put together your own copy. The artist for this Dune redesign is using A4 sized paper. I'm using US letter sized paper, so before I do anything, I'm going to need to convert all of the images into something that will fit my printer. I'm going to start with the treachery cards, which is in a PDF. So using Soda PDF here, I'm going to convert all of this into several PNG images. I'll then open those up in Photoshop and make my adjustments there. Though, if you don't have access to Photoshop, feel free to use something like GIMP, which is a free alternative. All right, so once I have these images opened up in Photoshop, I'm actually going to create a new document in Photoshop, sized to my paper size, which is eight and a half by 11 inches. I'm also gonna set it at 200 PPI, or pixels per inch. Once that's created, I'm gonna copy the images that I've converted from my PDF and paste them into my new document. So once I have all of my images pasted into this document, I'll line them all up as layers and then start printing them off one layer at a time. Okay, so before I do any final printing in full color, I'm gonna print out some test cards in black and white. 
I'm gonna use these to size to the card sleeves I'm using. Now, I'm using bridge card sleeves, and so I'm gonna use, naturally, bridge cards in order to uh, compare to my test print. Once I have this printed out, I'm gonna cut it to the size that it'll be and line it up to the card I'll be using. That way I know how much wiggle room I have based on the lines uh, that I'll be following when I make my cuts. So before I go and cut any of these cards up, I'm going to paste these labels onto this cardstock. It's a bit thicker than regular paper, and it will help give the cards some rigidity and make them resemble uh, professionally printed game cards a bit more. I'm gonna peel back just a little bit of these labels, an inch, maybe two inches, and fold it over on the edges. The labels I'm using have uh, a little split down the middle. Yours might not, but you know, it, it works all the same. So once you peel this down, just part way, and crease it a little so it doesn't flop right back. Because these are the same size papers, I can line them up on the bottom and the sides, which would then mean the tops are pretty much equal as well. So to do that, I'll loosely line it on the bottom and the sides, and then I'm gonna lift it and kinda, you know, just tap it up and down a little bit. I'm holding it pretty tight after I do that, so I can move it around but the pages don't slide apart. Pinching it good, I'm gonna lay it down, and then just make any adjustments that I need to to make sure it's pretty lined up. And I'm gonna push it down on the top. So now that it's there, I know it's pretty even and it won't come apart when I move it, right? Then just lift it up and begin to peel this back while pushing this down with my hand gradually. Once it's down, push it all in. Now, now all I have to do is cut this into these nine cards and they can be put into sleeves. I'm also making sure when I'm cutting these to put a lot of pressure on the ruler that I'm lining this up with so that while I'm cutting, the paper doesn't move as I'm moving along it. Also, making very sure not to cut my fingers over the edge of this. You gotta watch so that you're not you know, sticking your finger out like that. Make sure it's back enough so that the blade will miss. All right, so what am I saying? <laughs> I'm talking about sleeping. <laughs> For the treachery deck, I am not printing backs on the cards. I'm leaving them white. That's because I'm using opaque sleeves. For the other decks, I am not using opaque sleeves, so I will be printing backs. And I'll talk about cutting stuff with a back later. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and sleeve these treachery cards and call it a day. I was an idiot once. I'm not an idiot now. You can shuffle sleeved cards by just mashing them into each other. And uh, it's very quick, it's very easy, and it, uh, it does a real good job of randomizing. The whole, the whole gang is here. The Maula pistol, the Samuda drug, <laughs> the Chowmurky, the stone burner, the other kind of drug in this world, the Alaka drug. <laughs> what they call it in on Arrakis. The Tleilaxu Gahola. I love that. I pronounced that on the fly. I'm hoping I'm good. How about this one? A snooper, not snooker. Okay. Uh, weather control, that's just a regular thing our government is doing every day. <laughs> okay, conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> Got a Chris knife. Okay, uh, so for the rest of these cards, I am gonna put backs on them, uh, on like the treachery deck. And it starts the same, just make sure you push any air bubbles out as you get the sticker down. 
and then you're gonna make sure to line up the backs uh, very carefully. Make sure that there is not too much overlapping on the edges. So, you know, pay a little closer attention than you did for the front of the cards. It's the same procedure on the back though, you know, push them down, uh, make sure it's lined up the right way, get air bubbles out. And then uh, instead of cutting on the front, like before, you're gonna make sure to cut from the back because it's important that you are unable to identify uh, individual cards just from looking at the back of it. So make sure these cuts are straight. I like to make a few passes now because I'm cutting through a bit more material than before. I also highly recommend doing a test print uh, before you print all the cards out so you can make sure they line up. Okay, moment of truth, flip it over. Looks good, let's, uh, let's move on. So next I'm just gonna go ahead and print up the tokens. So uh, I just followed the instructions on the can for doing this and it worked fine. I uh, just did multiple layers and made sure I was doing it in a ventilated area. All right, so while we're waiting for that varnish to dry up, why don't we have a little fun and open up my old copy of Dune that I made. Um, I actually haven't, I don't think, opened this in a year or two, maybe more. Uh, so I kind of am excited to see what it looks like. So here's the box here. I uh, drew this myself. It was based off of a picture that I uh, saw online and I thought it looked neat, so I drew it and then covered the whole thing in packing tape to protect it, which uh, is a theme of this copy of Dune. Everything is covered in packing tape. And I repurposed a thrift store go to the head of the class from Hasbro. Uh, I used the board as well as one, at least one piece, and then the box itself uh, is that board covered in paper and tape. So popping it open, uh, I see a lot of white paper because this was all just regular white printer paper printed out of a black and white laser printer. That was kind of the inclination of this, this uh, copy of Dune is it was meant to be cheap and uh, um, efficient. It just, it's functional and that's it. It doesn't look good. There's not much written on it. It's all black and white. Uh, and so I actually used a lot of colored pencil to add a little color to it, especially to the map. But uh, yeah, these are the player shields, just regular cardstock paper, no coverings, and they barely stand up too. So very, very good at hiding information. Uh, instead of using combat wheels, like in the official copy and in the copy that I'm making right now, uh, this just came with little battle cards, they called it. And these were where you would write how many troops you were committing to an encounter and you would uh, just keep them secret with the cards that you were using behind them and then reveal them all at the same time. Uh, which is another thing too, the cards are also just thin, scissor cut, black and white cards that I, uh, for ease of, ease of use, added some color to. So the projectile cards were red and then uh, poison cards were green. But um, yeah, really by default, these just have all they say is battle projectile defense or battle poison defense. Uh, no mention of what they do, which I guess is, I guess that goes along with the official copy of Dune because those also don't say what those cards do. You just need to know. A really nice thing about the updated print and play is that it's got a ton of text on it that explains how the card interacts with other cards, with players, when you can use it. Uh, it's super helpful. Uh, it was the original copy and this dirt cheap copy, uh, which is, by the way, not disparaging. It is called uh, Dirt Cheap Dune. That is the official, uh, official print and play name of this. Um, it's it just has the bare essentials based on the original Avalon Hill copy. Uh, I did. It, I was smart enough. I was clever enough to make my own little Benny Jesuit prediction card. Uh, you'd use an included dry erase marker and uh, mark off which of the six factions you think would win the game, and then you'd circle on the bottom which round you'd think they'd win. So if you thought that the uh, Emperor would win on the eighth round, it might look a little something like that. And uh, yeah, this is still, it's functional. Like, I like the rest of this, it's very functional, it works well. Um, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't look too fancy. Uh, I was 
I was uh, aware enough of how hard it would be to shuffle uh, these poorly cut matte cardstock cards. And so I did sleeve them all in way too big card sleeves. And uh, it not only did it make shuffling them all easier, but it uh, had the added benefit of not being able to tell which card was which. Where, because these were all cut with scissors, they are not at all cut evenly. So without a card sleeve, you would be able to look at anyone's hand and tell exactly what they have if you knew the deck. Uh, digging a little deeper, I've got, oh, the, um, these are actually not part of Dirt Cheap Doom. These are, I think, I want to say these are the official player aids that came with Doom, uh, the, the original copy. These, of course, are just printed offline, but I think it's the same style that, uh, that came with it. So that part is Avalon Hill copyright. Uh, but the rest of this is all, um, it's, it's a mix of the Dirt Cheap files as well as some of my own editions. So uh, all of the, actually, let me open this up. It'll be a little easier to look at. All of the factions have their leaders on these cards with a number below denoting their strength. And it does have the name of the, the hero as well. And then I decided, instead of having little paper uh, army units, I would actually go ahead and make them all out of clay. So I would... Uh, I just got some clay that you bake in an oven. I would make a little ball in my hand, a little sphere, and then take, I think I was using like a, just like a glass with a flat bottom, and I would just press it into it so that they would all kind of come out, you know, roughly uniform uh, in size and, and thickness. And then for the Emperor and the Fremen who have uh, the super strong units, I made uh, physically larger to represent that, as well as carving and coloring in uh, a symbol for their faction. So it was a little easier to tell uh, who, uh, which units were the strong units and which ones were the regular for the factions that differentiate. Uh, I, th I thought it worked well, and I actually, for a, for a brief time, for this, this redo that I'm doing, I thought of just using these clay pieces in, as army units, because they feel nice, they're easy to stack, they are identifiable, they're colorful. Uh, the thing that ultimately made me decide to use the print and play official tokens with the art that, that I punch out uh, and, and use there is for whatever reason, and I, I, I remember thinking about this at the time, but I don't know why, I mixed up the colors of the Fremen and the Guild. The Fremen are supposed to be yellow tokens and the Guild are supposed to be the orange tokens. Uh, for whatever reason, I decided to, to reverse it, and I, I remember knowing that I was, I was reversing it, but I thought it was a good idea. Unfortunately, if I wanted to use these tokens, I would have to change Ilya's Dune art to match that. And um, I considered it, but I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make new tokens. Um, but yeah, the, uh, basically everything in here is just these weirdly tall cards uh, printed on printed on regular paper or cardstock and then wrapped in packing tape for, for uh, some, some uh, shuffling ability. Uh, the storm cards, all the traitors, uh, the, the leaders, the treachery cards, all the spice cards, which I actually went ahead and drew uh, little, little references because the, the cards just say, you know, this adds six spice. I have some cats really fighting in the background right now. They're, they're going at it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go help them. I'm gonna go make sure everything's cool. <laughs> Guys, what are you doing? Ali and Lucy, hey, hey. Just be cool, okay? Just be friends. Lucy, don't chomp on Oliver's ears, okay? All right, just be cool. Sorry, I had to talk down, talk down my pets. Uh, so for the spice, it would say, you know, you get uh, six spice on the funeral plane, but I, I don't know where the funeral plane is on the dude map. I have no idea. So I, I uh, drew reference, uh, reference material on every card so I could tell in relation to the center of the board where these other places were. You know, so I tried to put a lot of functionality into this after printing it out. And um, 
it, you know, it was it was a very functional board. I've I've played with this copy uh, across uh, a few state lines. I've played it in the Gulf of Mexico uh, on a cruise ship. It was um, it's really it's you know it's got its it's got its use. Uh, There's a little muddy dog print from uh, my cameraman Mike here, who his dog I think came in from a walk and ran over this copy. Uh, so you know that's kind of marked right on top there. Thank you, thank you, Benji. And uh, yeah, so the last thing I've got in here uh, is actually I do also have the spice, which I'm going to mention again in a second. But the last bit hanging out here is this board, which is split in two pieces and held together on the back with um, ticky tack, and then it then put together. And so uh, the board is again it was black and white but I covered it, or I colored it rather, with uh, uh, um, colored pencil. That's what I used. And I colored it all with colored pencil. And uh, I, you know, I think it looks okay. I actually don't think it looks too bad. I also drew in what happens when you hold the different strongholds, what little bonuses you might get on there. We'll probably get a, a close-up of that. Um, the bonuses that you get on there, I wrote on. So what this says, uh, units may move three spaces, you get plus two spice, and the units collect three spice, as long as you're holding um, uh, Arakeen. And uh, yeah, you know, I, um, I had a turn track on the top that was colored in if I wanted to play a short game at 10 turns or a full game at 15 turns. Uh, yeah, th this, this, this copy got me through um, you know, it got me into it got me into the, the the Dune board game, and it actually got me into print and play games as well. Uh, and so, I'm a little sad to be retiring it, but uh, I'm also excited to to play this again under a different light with uh, with new art and more functional, more usable pieces. Okay, so that's pretty much everything here that I've used for Dune for a while that I'm tossing out. Uh, maybe not toss. I might stash it away somewhere because it's kind of nostalgic. One thing though that I am bringing over to the new copy is the spice. I made these out of clay just like I did the army tokens. They're little wedges of uh, kind of a coppery color and a glittery blue. The reason I chose those colors is spice is never really defined in the novels. Uh, like th there's never a solid description of it. At times it's talked about as being kind of orangish and at other times it's talked about uh, appearing blue under, under a light. And so I figured making the two denominations of spice in those two colors made thematic sense. And so I'm gonna keep these. They, they feel good in the hand, they're very usable and I think they'll work fine in the new copy. But yeah, that's, um, this has been my copy of Dune. So, uh, the varnish is probably dry, so we should go and continue working. Okay, so the varnish dried and I put a total of three layers on these tokens. And I started punching them out already, but uh, it's pretty easy. Once the varnish is dried, I just line up the tokens on both sides of some cardstock, just like with the cards. And I'm going to punch them out with this three, what is it, five eighths inch hole punch that I bought at Michael's for half off. Those coupons, they'll get you far. So uh, I had to trim a little bit of uh, white border so that this would cleanly fit up to the tokens. Uh, but once I did, it was pretty easy to just go in and pop off a bunch of them. All right, so you might notice that these red tokens look a little bit funny compared to the other ones. I felt like the red and the orange tokens looked remarkably similar and actually sort of difficult to differentiate at a distance. So I just took a colored pencil, a red pencil, and quickly shaded over all the red tokens. Uh, it's not perfect, but I think it works well and it makes, it, uh, it makes this way more functional. Now these might not line up perfectly, Honestly, I've found this in professionally printed games as well. It's just sort of a reality of when you're laying stuff in uh, on paper on both sides, 
it ends up not quite lining up. I think it works fine still, and um, I'm happy with them. I printed out a low quality black and white copy of the map. I'm gonna line it up roughly and just make sure all of the sections can safely house all of the army tokens that I've made. So I'm just gonna roughly line it up and this also helps me get an idea of how much real estate the map will take up once it's laid down. I used the, uh, the poster option in Soda PDF, but I'm sure whatever PDF reader you use will have similar choices. And then I'm just going to put units on some of the smaller territories and the, the skinnier ones, just to make sure they'll comfortably fit in any spot they need to. So once I'm happy with the sizing, I'm going to go ahead and print up this map in full color and uh, higher quality. Once I'm happy with how it looks and how it lines up, I'm gonna make sure to tape down the pieces so they don't slide around before I make any cuts. And yeah, the, so I'm gonna make sure that the uh, the overlap on the map pieces is exactly right. Uh, I've probably made this measurement five or six times before making the cuts, and I was really thrilled with how it turned out. It, uh, it lines up almost perfectly. And for gameplay, it is perfect. It works perfectly fine, completely functional. Uh, and here I'm just cutting off the extra white bits before I sticker any of this onto thicker cardstock. Now for this, uh, I, in retrospect, maybe would have put it on even thicker cardstock or like doubled or triple layered it. What I used, it works fine, but in retrospect, I maybe would have liked something a little more robust. So I'm making sure to line things up very exactly here, so I have to make the fewest amount of cuts possible. Uh, I'm also making sure to sticker it to the inside of the cardstock that I'm using, and I'll be cutting on the outer edges. Okay, so once I have everything cut, I'm gonna go ahead and line it up just to make sure one last time that everything looks great. Uh, not that there's too much going back now. You can make tiny cuts to make adjustments, but once you're happy, uh, I'm opting to make some hinges with gaff tape that I have. And uh, I mean, you can use other tape too. I'm sure electrical or masking would, would work all right. Uh, I used gaff because it has kind of a cloth feel to it almost, a kind of woven feel, and it's pretty durable. Uh, it's also removable, so that if I did screw up uh, with this part, I could easily fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape in the middle of each hinge and then very carefully line it up just like this. I'm going to lightly set it down once I get it lined up to make sure it sits flat. And then I will go ahead and press the center down to kind of seal it in. And then I'm going to flip it over and put a little bit more tape just on the edges to kind of reinforce it and make sure it doesn't crumple on itself at all. So I want to get it as close to the edge as possible to, uh, to kind of just secure it a little better. Okay, once I've done that for every piece and uh, potentially trimmed any edges that needed to be trimmed to fit it all together, I'm going to put one last piece of tape right in the center here. This is going to give me a center hinge, uh, again, just for added security. And uh, now with this all put together, I'll be able to fold the map up nice and clean to put in a box. And it should be pretty durable and lightweight when uh, unfolding it and laying it flat. I'm also opting, just for cosmetic reasons, to uh, give an even border around every side. Now for the leader discs, I'm actually keeping them squared because I don't want to go buy a hole punch just for this. This is also completely optional, but I have the tool, so I am rounding all the edges of my leader squares. All right, so this is where I have to cut freehand circles and it's gonna turn out terribly. Uh, all right, uh, so this actually went 
way better than I anticipated. I used this razor and just put a lot of pressure down, made sure to follow the lines as closely as I could, and yeah, I think they turned out pretty good. So I cut out both of them, uh, both circles, from the sheets, and then poke a little hole in the center of each one. I'm gonna use a brad or a paper fastener to connect them. All right, and the player shields are pretty much done the same way as all of the other cardboard bits. Uh, I am doing them double-sided so that you have, say, the Benny Gesserit logo on one side and then the specific rules on the other, just like the uh, just like the shields should be. And uh, yeah, just make sure they line up straight, you know, or oriented correctly. And then I'm cutting this out with the same razor that I used for the combat wheels. Just you know, take your time. It's all straight lines. Putting little folds here so that it'll stand up. All right, cool. So that is the the process that I did to put together this copy of Dune. Uh, what would I do differently? So I'm very happy overall with this copy. I'm incredibly happy with it. I'm actually setting up for a game uh, this weekend. So I'm uh, very much looking forward to that. The only thing I can say I'd change right now would be this uh, map. While it looks great, it's super functional, it folds, which is, I. I had some issues, I'll say, with trying to make a folding map initially. Um, I wanted it to have like a vinyl backing on it to give it uh, just a little more of a professional look so you couldn't see all the tape underneath. Uh, I tried and failed, uh, you know, as you can see here. Uh, I really had a hell of a time um, putting this together. It did not work out well, so I peeled all the vinyl off and uh, just left it with an ugly back, but you never see the back, I figured. It's gonna be sitting you know, flat on a table. Um, the thing I would change about the map, though, is I would make it a little thicker, and I, I said this before, uh, I used, for actually for all the tokens, all of the like, like rigid pieces in this game, the tokens, the, uh, the player shields, the little uh, leader, leader bits, uh, I used magazine or comic book uh, backboards. The kind of thing that you put, like you put a comic book in a, in a plastic bag and then you put a cardboard piece behind that so it doesn't fold over. I used those. You can buy them on Amazon for, I think they're like 10 or $11 for a package of 100 of them. And they are, uh, I think they're, they're eight and a half by 11, which is the size of US letter paper, which is what I used uh, for this and other print and place. I used that for the map as well, and I kind of would like the map to be a little heavier and a little thicker. It works fine like this, it's kind of just a personal preference, but uh, if given the option to redo this, which I guess I do have the option, no one is forcing me to use this, it's just a question of if I want to put the time and money back into it, um, I would either glue two of those boards together uh, for each piece of this map, or I would just get thicker cardboard and use that as the basis for the map. Um, that is really the only thing I think I would change with this, honestly. Uh, I'm very happy with all uh, with the cards and how they all turned out. I think they look good. Uh, they, um, yeah, they feel like cards. They feel like regular professional cards once they're in a sleeve. Uh, you could, if you want, put like a, a varnish on the cards so they have like a kind of a glossy finish. I did not do that because I knew I was gonna be sleeving my cards. And so I figured that was not worth the extra cash. The next thing I'll address is how much did this cost me? You can buy professionally printed copies of this exact art 
redesign of Dune online, and it'll cost you like $150 or $200. The amount of money I spent on this was about 30 bucks in materials. Obviously, it took me time myself to put it together, and if you're paying somebody to do it, you're gonna be paying for their time as well as the materials. It took me about a weekend of, um, of time to put this together. Not, when I say a weekend, I don't mean 48 hours. You know, I didn't do it, wake up, work on this all day, go to sleep. I don't really have a good estimate of how many like hours it took me, because I did this pretty casually. Uh, you know, I had my, my buddy Mike, uh, shooting me while I was while I was putting pieces of this together and then off camera I kind of assembled a lot of pieces on my own um, I, I don't really have unfortunately a good exact hour estimate for how much this took me but I'll say I did it over about a weekend um, and I enjoyed it it was fun to actually put all this together I um, I yeah I mean I, I owned the printer when the $30 cost is not counting the printer or anything I did put a list in the description of every piece that I used for this. The labels, the printer I own, uh, I even put a link to the thing, the, um, the, the corner clipper I used to clip the corners, to round off the corners of these leader squares, which I, I owned that already. Uh, I play war games and I clip all my counters for that, so I owned uh, a, a heavy duty corner clipper, a rounder, from Oregon Laminations. It cost me 50 bucks. Uh, my printer, I'll say, also cost 50 bucks, and then ink, I bought third-party ink, that cost me like 14 or $15. The total price, if you have nothing, if you need a printer, uh, if you need ink, if you need all that stuff, is going to run you about $140 or $150. If you already have the printer and you either have or don't need the corner rounder, yeah, the materials for this were like 30 40 bucks. And a lot of those, I did not use all of it, right? So I bought a package of 100 magazine backs to make the map and all the cardboard bits. I did not use 100 sheets for Dune. I used probably 10, 10 to 15. And so I used those as well for other things. I, I bought a print and play of uh, Evolution Climate from, uh, from, the, main, from the, the, the publisher's website. And I used those same boards and same pieces and materials to make that. Uh, I did that with 1889. I did that with an infamous traffic. The material cost will, it'll go into other games you put together if you so desire. Uh, but I, I don't, I couldn't give you percentage costs off those. So the, everything I purchased that I used to make this game was about 30 or 40 bucks. With the printer, if you needed to buy that, it's, you know, another 50 for what I got, plus a little bit for ink. I think this was super affordable. I think this was affordable. It was not too hard. It was very fun to do. Uh, you can, you know, if, if you're if you're good with stuff like Photoshop, you can make adjustments, customizations to these pieces if you want. Um, you know, a, a adjust how some of the images look, adjust the names and text on things if you so desire. And it feels really nice. It feels nice to have a board game that you want to play that you built yourself, right? Even though uh, you know, Ilya made this brilliant art design. I still almost feel like a sense of ownership over this game because I assembled all the pieces myself. And it's cool. It, it actually really makes me want to do more print and plays. Uh, I, I already have done a handful of them and I want to do more and more and more now. So I'm kind of you know scouring Board Game Geek and other websites for cool print and plays of things uh, because it was really neat. It was cool, it was fun, and it was affordable. Um, I love that some companies officially offer print and plays like you know uh, Evolution Climate, you can buy that game as a print and play set. I think it's like 15 bucks for all the, the high res files. Uh, Holland Spiel, who did an infamous traffic as well as a whole bunch of other games. Um, they have print and play files for pretty much all their games that run you 10 to $15. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend doing this if you're interested in Dune and if you're interested in print and plays. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, I'll, I'll respond, shoot me an email, scott at phasingplayer.com. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, try to help you out as much as I can with, with this stuff, uh, because I think it's, it, I was very intimidated by print and plays originally. They ain't that bad. And not only are they not that bad, they're actually awesome. They're a ton of fun to put together. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope that this helped you out. I hope that you go and make your own print and play of Dune. And I'm looking forward to playing this, you know, in, in a couple days here. Check out my website at phasingplayer.com for more videos like this. Uh, as well as written stuff that I put out. Uh, I would really appreciate it. 
And yeah, I hope to see you again soon. Take care.